with a panel of strategists, Greg McEachran from Proof Strategies, he leans liberal, Larissa Waller of GT and Company, she previously served as the head of communications for Ontario Premier Doug Ford, and McGrath is the NDP National Director, and Greg Weston from Ernst Cliff Strategies has a nonpartisan perspective. Thank you all for being here. I think we have a little bit to talk about. Larissa, let's start with you. Was last night just too much of a bare-knuckled fight this early in the contest? You know, I think Scott Aitchison hit it on the head. Um, I was talking to a colleague of mine a few minutes ago, and he asked, you know, what do you think? And I said, I hope that Canadians weren't watching last night, because if there was anybody who was considering voting conservative and they watched that last night, you know, we probably lost them. I think that they were speaking to a very specific segment of the population, and that was obvious even in what they were saying. Um, it was very targeted, but I'm guessing the big winner from last night was Patrick Brown because he probably sold memberships and convinced some people to vote for him. I don't think anyone last night, except for maybe Scott Aitchison, did that. Greg McEachran, uh, as a Liberal, I'm assuming that you were very happy to see them beat each other up yesterday, but uh, today, interim Conservative leader Candace Bergen said the party will not attract disaffected Liberals <laughs> by, quote, becoming Liberal light but by being consistently conservative. Now, is that a mistake by the Conservatives to not try and attract more centrist voters? Yes, in the word yes, because, I mean, Candace Bergen is ignoring some really essential contributions that a Conservative party has made. You know, I'm thinking of uh, Brian Mulroney's, um, you know, in terms of, you know, his work on the environment or, um, you know, standing up against conservatives like Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan on apartheid. Um, look, when did adult become a compliment in Canadian politics? You know, you saw that today, you know, Scott Aitchison, uh, um, Jean Charest, that those are the terms that they were described in. I, I, you know, in terms of the good, the bad and the ugly, I, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the good was, you know, as, as uh, Larissa said, um, Scott's uh, performance. I think the bad, you know, I, what I don't understand is um, the, the the efforts um, that Leslie Lewis and, and uh, Pierre Polliver tried to make to show that they were supporting the occupation of Ottawa. Literally, if, if this event had been held here in February, those people in the room would not have been able to get to the room and how quickly they forget. You look at some comparisons to the U.S. in the Republican Party, the people that are supporting the January 6th, um, you know, uh, <laughs> almost the, the overturn of government there, calling them patriots. I mean, what happened to people that were on the side of law and order? So I think there were a, a lot of bad things that, that happened last night. You know, Sheree may have done something for his campaign last night. Uh, interestingly, you know, f some fundraising numbers from earlier this week show that he was neck and neck with Paul Over. Um, you know, if, if you're a conservative and you watched this last night, you may despair and you, you may decide that you want to send some money Sheree's uh, way. But, you know, if, if I was to try to find, you know, the conservative, the right wing element of the conservative party on a map, um, the one that I saw last night, you would call these people Florida. Uh, it was not a good look for the conservative party. And just before I bring you in, I want to play this clip specifically on that exchange uh, between Chere and Polyev uh, speaking about the truckers. Let's play that and we'll get to you, Anne. Well, I did stand up for freedom during the pandemic. From the very beginning, That's I was, not true. I That's was not among true. the loudest voices. That you were not one of the loudest if, voices, Mr. Polly. You were not one of the loudest voices. In if fact, could, uh, you did not speak up until it was convenient for you Actually, that is not true, speak Madam Lewis. You did not that even not go true, to the, uh, the, the trucker protest. You actually oh, went and you took a picture in your neighborhood at a local stop. Thank but you. Mr. Polyev, during that period, supported an illegal blockade. Oh, Mr. You Mr. cannot Mr. make laws and break Mr. laws Mr. and but then say I will make laws for other people. No, I'm I sorry, but that is a question Mr. of basic no. foundation Mr. and principles Mr. in Mr. my life. <clears throat> now, Anne, you hear the boos in the room as Charest is there trying to point the finger at Polyev. I mean, what does that say to you about how his answers were landing in that specific room? Well, in that room, they were pretty well adied. I mean, but that, that is what was interesting to me about that is how much effort was going into proving who was the most supportive of a blockade that most Canadians opposed. Um, so it, it kind of makes you wonder what their electoral strategy is in all of this. So, uh, you know, the, I think that the, the reviews uh, today from everywhere, almost everywhere, were that it was a bit of a gong show. Uh, I suspect a lot of Conservatives are not that 
uh, happy with the way that that went. Um, I, I think that uh, if this whole race uh, kind of goes towards this idea of who is the most conservative, they're going to have to say what they mean by that. What does conservative mean? And, you know, they're also going to end up uh, in much the same situation that they ended up last time, where you have, um, you know, the where basically, for an election campaign, they're going to have to figure out a way to speak to the majority of Canadians. And I don't think that what happened last night speaks to much of, of even a minority of Canadians. Greg Weston, what do you think about that? The fact that the, uh, this room was very different, uh, but, you know, was Patrick Brown, as Larissa had mentioned, the clear winner by not being in the room at all? Well, I think the, the jury is out on, on Patrick Brown. We'll see he... Um... He has to show up for the next one. Uh, he will be there. This was kind of a, a surprise. You know, people weren't expecting very much, very low expectations from this. I don't think it was a shock that uh, Polyev and, went, and Chere went, went at, at each other's uh, throats and all this. Where would Patrick have fit into that? Uh, I think he made a calculated guess that it's probably better to, to let them go out and bloody themselves. And maybe he can come in and be uh, the voice that will try to straddle the, the two sides of the camps and show maybe just a little bit of being prime ministerial, something we didn't see a whole lot last night. I mean, we've all seen uh, leadership races over the years, and everybody gets a little bit testy. But there's a big difference between poking one of your colleagues in the ribs and sticking a knife in repeatedly over time. The people cheering loudest today were the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party watched this and saying, hey, we just saved ourselves a fortune in attack ads in the next election campaign. So the Conservatives, really, what all of this is telling us is this is a party that does not have any discipline right now. It has no real leadership in the party. And so this, the people who are vying to be the next leader may just find themselves victorious and standing on a pile of ashes if they're not careful. Yeah, Larissa, I, I'm going to bring you back in for a moment here. But before we do that, I want to play this clip of Leslie Lewis uh, and sort of frame it in this way that she, you know, was, you know, did come in third place last time. But clearly she is, you know, in it to win it at this point. Let's listen to the clip and then I'll bring you back in for a second. Mr. Pierre Polyev has ran from the media the last few days because he doesn't want to declare whether he's pro-life or pro-choice. So she's not sitting back anymore, right? She's clearly going for it here, and she's calling out a number of her opponents for their stance on abortion. That's what we had heard there. Uh, what do you think of how she is playing it and how she is framing herself here? Because it doesn't seem like she is looking for that sort of down-ballot support uh, and, you know, happy to finish a second or third. It looks like she is really going for this. And, and it's funny because I actually thought her performance in the last leadership race was stronger than what we've seen this time. This time she seems a little more aggressive, a little more like trying to match the style of Pierre Polliver. And I don't know if that's natural for her. I, I don't know her well enough. What I do know is she's trying to shore up her support that could go to Pierre's team. Um, so talking about things like abortion, like support for the trucker convoy, um, but almost as Anne mentioned in who supported them more, um, who's more pro-life. Pro um, and she wants those people to feel at home in her camp versus Pierre's camp. Just a couple of minutes left here. Greg McEachran, uh, you know, we haven't spoken about these two, except you didn't mention Scott Aitchison before, but Roman uh, Baber as well. What do they need to do to stand out next week? Reminds me of an old joke that Obama told at a White House correspondence dinner. Uh, he said that uh, certain candidates aren't rating high enough to rate a joke. Um, so I think that's a part of the problem as well. Um, for the There's always going to be also rands um, in, a, in, a can, in a campaign. You know, I, I do warn anyone... You know, who's doing this to try to raise their profile, a lot of times people, it doesn't end up in any great profile. You don't win even as a member of parliament. You end up with a lot of a lot of debt. Um, one of the things I thought that Charette could have pushed back on more on Polliver about is that he said Polliver is a career politician. This is the only job he's ever had. And so if he's going to attack Charette's career, which is a bit varied and has been in politics and as someone who was at the referendum rally in 1995, I'm glad that Charette, you know, worked to keep our country together. He might want to push back on someone who's made a great deal of money uh, thanks to the taxpayers of Canada since 2004. 
keep it very yeah, quick, I, I, Anne. I just wanted to ask you, that, is Sheree doing what... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's an important point about the uh, also-rans. Not everybody who enters a leadership race enters it to win. Uh, they might enter it for future political considerations. And lastly, Greg Weston, what does uh, Sheree have to do to make sure that he tries to put some distance between himself and Polyev in closing here? I think he just has he has to stick to... He, this is a very experienced politician. Uh, he doesn't need any instruction. Uh, I think this race is, at some point, is going to come down to not just who's going to be the leader, but what is this party going to look like afterwards? And if he can be the, the voice of reason that, that people see, he, he can bridge what is clearly a very divided party. Uh, that may be what he needs to go over the top. Awesome. Thank you guys for doing this. Really appreciate it. Greg McEachran, Larissa Waller, Ann McGrath, and Greg Weston. We'll see you guys again next time. Really appreciate it.